the heart of the Andes or the crest of the Himalayas contain no more sublime scenery than the wild, unknown fastness of the Sierra Madres of Mexico. That is how one adventurer described the Barrancas del Cobre. Sounds like a great place to run your first ultra marathon, doesn't it? After a week of hanging out in the canyons, meeting new friends, people we will stay connected to for the rest of our lives, race day, the Super Bowl of the canyons, as I am dubbing it, has finally arrived. Okay, it is race day. Greg's putting on some hamstring goo. Squirrels, nut butter. How do Don't you ask. feel? A little nervous. Never run 50 miles before, but uh, we had never moved in Mexico before before we did that, and that turned out all right. So let's jump headfirst into this and see what happens. Our lucky number is 062. My favorite number is 624, so we're two thirds of the way there. Okay. Feeling okay. good. Hopefully, I run more than two thirds of the way. Do you have any last words for your legs? Okay, guys, I need you to stay durable, strong. Resilient, mobile, flexible. What else? I think that's it. Got that? You got that? You got that? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, don't hurt yourself. How do you guys feel? It's feel race day. Good. Yeah, ready to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a good team. day to die. <laughs> <laughs> The initial miles of the race were easy, adrenaline was flowing, everybody was excited, talking to one another, having a great time. If only the remaining 40 something miles would feel just this great. Marchando. We're marching up this hill. The views are breathtaking. It's amazing here. Uh, these videos, the shots, do not do it justice. You have to train and run. <coughs> You've got to train and run at least hike to see this beauty. All right, down we go. Mm -hmm. 
One thing you should know about ultra running is that it is 100% a team sport. While I was busy running, trying to put one foot in front of the other and just survive, Hillary was working just as hard as I was behind the scenes. All right, I saw Greg off at the start line. I think there's more than a thousand runners, but Greg stuck out well above the rest of the crowd. He's off, he's actually been running just over an hour. I decided to come back to the hotel. It's about 7.30, I am really hungry. We have no food here except what I'm supposed to meet Greg um, with after he runs about 18 miles. But I wanted to make sure the Skittles and the chips that I have for Greg, I wanted to make sure everything's edible. And since I haven't had breakfast, well, this is a behind the scenes look at uh, what it looks like to be the biggest cheerleader of a 50 miler. Now I'm pretty sure the uh, Skittles and chips didn't hold me over. So I've come to the breakfast spot we've been coming to the past few days. I did get Greg an extra tortilla with avocado. We'll see if he's hungry for that. I'm expecting he's gonna be passing through right here in the next hour or so, but first I need to fuel up so I can be the best cheerleader I can be. All right, I got the goods. I got two extra tortillas for Greg. Kind of like a quesadilla for me and a giant coffee. I'm ready to I'm ready to be a good cheerleader. First runners have passed. I have Greg some avocado tortillas ready to go. This is insanely exciting. I'm just sitting in the shade. I have some an icy uh, bandana here for Greg to switch for. I have no idea when he'll pass. I heard the first runner for the marathon distance, 42 kilometers, is already on their way back, which means I think they have less than six kilometers. It's only been a little over three hours, so these guys are flying and waiting for our first girl to come through. The cheers will be loud and proud. Definitely starting to heat up out here. Some of these downhills just tearing my feet and quads apart. 
muscles are being tenderized at every step. Maybe, maybe five kilometers or so back into town. I don't know. It's been about 30, 40 minutes. We're going at a decent pace now because quite a bit's been downhill. But I'd be lying if I wasn't praying for a little up. A little. Not much. Gracias, gracias. James Arthur. I can see. Arriba la música. Hemos llegado. Verdaderamente. Now after meeting Hillary at mile 18 and getting ice down and, and getting some fresh Gatorade and some fresh food, I decided to put down the action camera, to put down the camera I was running with. Uh, at that point, at mile 18, the heat was intensifying and I knew it was going to be a very, very long day and trying to run film and survive all at the same time it just wasn't going to be possible so I decided to to put down the camera and just focus on putting one foot in front of the other and surviving the next 32 miles. Now putting down the camera was probably the best decision I made the entire day because the next 12 miles were brutal. Now the first five and a half miles of, of this 12 mile section were relatively flat, as flat as canyons can be. We were kind of running along the, the riverbed, running to another bridge and then ultimately another town. Uh, but while it was flat, there was no shade and the heat was slowly roasting us. The next several miles were harder than I could have ever imagined. All right, we are at uh, 49, 50 something kilometers out of the 80. I think it's a Mexican 80 kilometers. Every, every kilometer feels like one and a half. I like, uh, Nine hours and 41 minutes in, but I got a cold view I'm about to show you. 
Me and Edgar are taking advantage of these ice stations. Eating some food, just have some Snickers and goo, banana, drench myself in some water. This is intense. Now, it felt as if we were running straight up the canyon walls. And in fact, in a way, we were. Because little did I know at the time, our final destination or the highest point we would run to and then turn around at uh, was essentially the top of, of the canyon. Uh, I didn't know that when we were running, but it certainly felt like that's exactly how we were running. Miles 26 through 31 had over 2,903 feet of elevation gain, almost 3,000 feet of elevation gain. That's over uh, over half a mile of straight vertical climbing, or over 800 meters of climbing in six miles. With some sections had a 40 percent grade. All right, we made it back to Los Alisos. We have five kilometers to the in Puente, we're gonna cross the river, and then nine to Arique, and then seven to Guadalupe, and seven back. I think I can do it. It's like a bean quesadilla. Bean taco, nice bro. Edgar's becoming my ranger buddy. How you doing, man? I'm all right, quads. But you got some tortillas, so it'll <laughs> What goes up must come down. We were going down pretty much the exact same path we had, had just come up. And while that may seem like, oh, cool, you get to run down, uh, it's not going to be as hard. The problem is it was so steep and so rocky that you couldn't, at least, at least I couldn't and me and Edgar couldn't, just we couldn't just run down. We couldn't just let your legs go and... and and just go fast because it was so rocky. It felt like every step I had to take it, and it didn't just feel like, I know every step I took, I was having to break, I was having to, to slow down, having to make sure I had my footing, uh, having to make sure I didn't fall off the edge of this stupid canyon. Uh, meanwhile, I, there was Tarumala uh, ladies in sandals and dresses just Flying down the hill without a care in the world, not even not even having to look down, just their their experience and time in the canyon. They knew where their foot was going to land, and they knew if it was secure or not. They knew how to run in this train, and uh, Edgar and I definitely did not. Now, despite the pain in our quads going down, we we did make it down uh, from El Pandito and Los Alisos much faster than we made it up. Uh, but faster is is a very relative term because it was slowly starting to approach darkness. It's been about seven and a half hours since I last saw Greg. I'm hoping he's making his way towards me, but I think a van may have picked him up. Not sure, either way. I'm eating all of the snacks. That was not supposed to happen. Greg doesn't have a light. He's been running about 13 hours now. So things aren't going quite as planned, but I'm hoping to see him and his smiling face running down this road very soon. As we're making our way down, all I could think about was making it back to town, making it back to Urique, seeing Hillary, sitting down, resting, and eating some Skittles. You guys made it. 14 kilometers left. Yeah. Seven out, seven back. You got this. How do you feel? Tired. In one word, how Tired. are your legs? Done. How are your legs, Edgar? Ah, uh, I feel like meat grinders. <laughs> meat grinders. All right. My feet and my legs have never hurt so badly in my life before. Final stretch. You got this. You got it. Woo! 
You got it. Go guys. Oh man. Meanwhile, Hillary was having a grand old time. This is the after party. It's a lot of beer. Herbert's making friends with Nacho Baracho. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. At this point in the race, I was just trying to survive. It was a complete mind game to know that you're so close to finishing you know, only seven, eight miles left in the race, which is, that's pretty far in and of itself. But in terms of the race, we were close to finishing, yet we had to run away from the finish line. I think that, uh, that was tough and made the entire way out just mentally exhausting. And even at one point, there was a truck that passed us and I, I watched it drive off into the distance and I saw saw the headlights or the tail lights rather kind of winding up this big steep hill and in probably the most pathetic, weak, desperate voice I turned to Edgar and said, we don't have to run up that, do we? He said, yeah bro, we do. Now while I seem to be a source of, of strength and uh, energy for Edgar earlier in the race when he was contemplating turning around, it was Edgar who is now mentally pulling me along in this race and really allowing me uh, to continue running and allowing, helping me, guiding me uh, towards the finish line. And meanwhile, Hillary's source of energy throughout the day hasn't seemed to, to to dip or to taper whatsoever. Okay, we're going on 15 hours and 19 minutes of running. I have my trusty team here. They're not looking so hot. I don't even know. It's 9.45. We are hoping for a really tall gringo and a really short Mexican to head our way soon. Please, for the sake of us, for the sake of your cheerleading team, Please come back and come back in one piece. This is a party. People are chanting for the police. Now Edgar and I kept putting one foot in front of the other and slowly, very, very slowly inching towards the finish line. Can I ask? We'll see what our feet look like. They did it. They finished. There they are. Edgar and Greg both finished the 80K. And all Greg wants is a beer. And Greg doesn't often want a beer, so when boy wants a beer today, he's getting it because he walks like that. He did it. Ladies and gentlemen, he ran 50 miles. 
That was more than 50 miles. You can't. Check everybody's GPS voice. That was more than 50. You can't tell by this walk. You can't. But I can tell you. Yeah, but we got a little drum, so it was worth it. <laughs> there was a lot of dust. After more than 16 hours of running, we did it, we finished, we ran 80 kilometers or 50 miles, though I was and maybe still am fully convinced that we ran much further than 80 kilometers. Every one kilometer felt like one and a half. The minutes felt like hours, but we did it. We finished the Caballo Blanco. Urique Ultra Marathon. It was truly an inspirational and life-changing day, yeah, life-changing 16 hours. Not because uh, Edgar and I finished the race, not because we had run 50 miles, but uh, because of the relationships we had uh, grown and developed along the way, the people we had talked to on the course. And for me, through watching the Tarumara running this race, watching them run in sandals, in, in dresses and skirts just blowing past us with uh, really no formal training, no GPS watches, uh, wearing sandals made from, from tires on their feet. Just witnessing their strength and stamina was, uh, it, it truly was life changing and it makes me rethink everything about my own life, everything about my fitness, about my diet, uh, just every aspect of my life I feel like was put into question during those 50 miles. I am honored to have run alongside the Tarumara and to have finished the same race as them, albeit just a little bit slower.